Hey, what's up, Earth? It's Spaceman Matt here to talk about the seventh episode of the second season of The Orville uh, called Deflectors. Now, I started this episode with very low expectations because they brought us back to uh, Machlis again in this episode. And uh, we had just been there for Jaloja, and they were bringing them back again. This was going to be the third episode of the season featuring Bordas, and uh, I thought this is a little too much with the Mocklins, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of Orville fans go on about how this is the new Star Trek, how they're exploring strange new worlds, and uh, well, if the strange new world is Mocklis, I was thinking, wow, they've been exploring that a lot, and they're not really exploring anything else. But as the episode went on, I was really surprised because I thought it was going to start out as like another soap opera type story uh, uh, like uh, like you remember there was an old soap opera called As the World Turns. Um, I thought this could be called uh, As Machlis Turns. Uh, we start out with uh, relationship problems with uh, Cassius and Kelly Grayson uh, first off and then we find that they're going back to the to Machlis to uh, upgrade their deflectors. There's a Machlis engineer who's the best uh, in his uh, field who's going to upgrade the Orville's deflectors. Now, of course, um, out of all the people in the Machlis home world, it's somebody that uh, Bordas had had a relationship with. So it looked like there was going to be a love triangle issue with Bordas, Clyden, and uh, and this guy Lokar, this engineer. So as the episode progresses, it turns out that uh, Lokar and, or, and Bordas ended their relationship uh, uh, for unknown circumstances. But then uh, Lokar gets to uh, know the security officer Tala uh, and starts to make friends with her. And then, it fi then he reveals that he's attracted to women and wants hey. to have a relationship with her. So they uh, eventually go on a date. Tala is reluctant at first. Uh, maybe mixing business with pleasure is not a good idea. But uh, they go on a date and uh, they, they wind up in the environmental simulator. Tala is called away to uh, assist on the bridge. We see Clyden coming in to confront Lokar. Uh, but uh, that he's aware of his uh, his uh, attraction to women, or I guess we'd say heterosexuality, and uh, which is uh, not uh, appropriate on Machlis, and he's about to reveal uh, his uh, secret to Bordas and everyone, uh, and that would, of course. Uh, expose him and it's a it's a crime to be heterosexual on the Mocklin home world so uh, so he doesn't so he doesn't really want to go back so we find out when Tala comes back to the environmental simulator Lokar is nowhere to be found and the ship cannot locate him anywhere um, in, inside so when they review security footage they, it looks like Someone, they don't know who, because it's been blocked out, has um, executed him. Uh, so as the episode goes on, Tala investigates. Uh, the Makas aren't happy that she's had a relationship with Lokar, that they find out Lokar um, likes women. So uh, they're, they're not happy that she's investigating, but uh, Captain Mercer lets her investigate anyway. Um, and she finds that Lokar is actually hiding on, uh, in, a, in a shuttle. He's got some type of cloaking device and he's made it look like he had been disintegrated, but he really had uh, used the environmental sim simulator to make it look that way. And uh, he's been hiding because when he returns to Machlis, he's going to face trial and, 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 fa and face life in prison. And that's what happens at, at the end of the episode. Uh, I think this episode did a very handled the issue of 
in this in this case it's homosexuality or in in and for for Mocklands it's heterosexuality but just that stigma that that when you're different from everybody else that that you have to be shamed ashamed of it and try to to keep it under wraps or or, or face the consequences not only that angle of the story which uh, which I think they handled very well also just when you're dealing with and people who are inflexible in their thinking people who think that in in this case heterosexuality is bad um, that you you have to be have some level of respect for their beliefs when their beliefs are different than you I think that was another a aspect of the story that I think they handled pretty well is that you know you have to kind of agree to disagree sometimes in the, in, the, in a matter of diplomacy and uh, I thought they handled that that pretty well overall I think it was a pretty good episode one other minor thing that bothered me was that they had to test the deflectors and they put the ship in, with all the people on board in jeopardy. You know, maybe some, most of the crew could have did a, what do you call, a furlough on uh, the Mockless uh, homeworld for, for a couple of, for, for the event. Maybe it's hard with the, sh with the shuttlecraft. But I think putting the ship in jeopardy for a test is kind of uh, probably not a smart thing to do. Because uh, in case things don't work, they're going to wind up being blown up. So I, I just thought that was kind of odd, the way they had to test the deflectors. I mean, maybe they could have tried it out on the shuttle first or something, I don't know. But other than that, um, it was a, a very good episode. We're, we're halfway through the season, and I hope uh, uh, the rest of the, of the series continues with this quality. I think this kind of almost ties for me with Happy Refrain is the best episode of the season so far. So I think Happy Refrain may wind up on top. We'll see. Or, or maybe this episode or maybe one of the remaining seven episodes of the season might, might even be better. We don't know. All right. So I'll, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks.